Yes, uh, I guess uh, I'm on my way to uh, to Sliamen, uh, which is the community near Powell uh, Lake, to talk about the uh, treaty that uh, they will be voting on uh, fairly sh shortly. And the reason I, I, I feel committed enough to take the time and effort to, to travel this distance and to speak uh, with people in, in, that are in this community is because Abor they're, they're voting on, on Aboriginal title and uh, a lot of people ask themselves, well, what does that really mean? Well, Aboriginal title is, is, is basically more a legal concept generated by, by courts, which basically addressed the issue that, that indigenous people were here in North America before settlers came, and uh, which raises this whole issue about uh, why do settlers say that they have title here that basically supersedes the title of the or original indigenous people. And the reason they say that is, is, is they believe that their rights are based on this thing called the colonial doctrines of discovery, which said that, uh, I guess, white uh, Christian settlers uh, could claim land from indigenous people uh, right from underneath their feet simply because we weren't Christians and we weren't white people. That's generally the, the, the logic that's still behind it. It's, it's similar to the logic that used to say that white uh, people could own black people as slaves, you know. Uh, that same kind of uh, logic, but it's ingrained in this whole colonial doctrine of discovery because uh, whenever indigenous people uh, challenge, let's say, uh, a uh, provincial government mining permit to Imperial Metal or to uh, to Siku Mines or what have you. The uh, argument that the provincial crown and the federal crown uh, will uh, bring forward in court, the first argument is the colonial doctrines of discovery. They say from those doctrines we were given this right uh, to have uh, federal and provincial jurisdiction over all of BC and all of Canada. That's the grounds that they use. They go back to, you know, 1493 to these uh, papal bulls done by the Crown, and that's their argument. You know, there's nothing more ridiculous for a modern uh, country in the 21st century to be relying on one of the most racist pieces of, of law as being the grounds for their jurisdiction and for their power uh, over Indigenous people. That's why Indigenous people have been basically marginalized. Um, economically, that's how come Indigenous people are the poorest people in Canada, and the poorest people in the United States, the poorest people in Australia, and the poorest people in New Zealand, is because of this thing called the colonial doctrines of discovery. And that's really is uh, what it really means, uh, the colonial doctrines of discovery, is that all of the, the uh, property vests in the crown, and that's how come where I'm going, they have an Indian land claim, you know, which is ridiculous. First of all, they're not Indians. Secondly, because Indians are really from India, they're, they're actually, they're actually yeah, Coast Salish, you know. <laughs> And, uh, and then they're making a claim against the Crown, who doesn't really own the land. But that's the, the, the psychological impact of this thing called the Colonial Doctrine of Discovery. I asked Janice Billy, one of um, the activists back in our community, she's got a, a PhD from uh, S SFU. Uh, she's a language teacher in Sokomok language. I asked her the other day, uh, when were you discovered? And then she kind of was on the, what? I said, when were you discovered? And she said, uh, hmm, 
Uh, I don't know, I think I was about nine or ten when I was discovered. And I said, well, how did you feel? And she said, I, feel, I felt very embarrassed and I felt really ashamed that, that I was discovered. You know, and this is the kind of experience that Indigenous people all have to go through as part of their identity building period is, is come to this notion that they're discovered. And, and, and what it means basically through discovery is that you're going to be excluded and marginalized from the, the things that those who discovered you are going to benefit from. And so that's where the transfer of property you know, uh, goals, you know. Uh, the Supreme Court of Canada has sort of uh, been challenged with this whole notion of how did the settlers wind up getting title and the native people have nothing and then they came up with this whole concept of Aboriginal title which uh, basically is a legal concept like I said earlier and it means that throughout all of British Columbia where we never signed treaty uh, we have the underlying proprietary interest in that land. So that's what Aboriginal title uh, basically means, and we're going to have to resolve that here in the, in, in the 21st century. Uh, Non-natives have to make sure that they don't claim because of uh, Christopher Columbus, if they have any interest, it's just like we have as, human, uh, as part of our human rights. Mm. Thank you. Woo!